Hello, dear friends. Out at the bus stop. See if we want to talk just a little bit about something here. May the Lord help us to hear and understand and to search our heart. Right? That's what we will have to do. And we need the Lord's help just to do that. Alright, so in James chapter 1. Boy, is there a lot to learn in James. Really is. We need the Lord's help when we look into His Word. We need the Holy Spirit to show us what's in our heart. You know, because the Lord looks at the human heart. He sees what's in there that don't nobody else see. He sees what's in there that you yourself can't even see. And I cannot see what's in my own heart. We might be shocked to find out what's in there. Mm -hmm. That's true. So let's look at James 1. And let's start reading here. This is about lust. And before anybody says, well, I don't need to hear that because... I'm not lusting after anybody. Well, let's just listen here about lust for a minute because it's not just about to do with the opposite sex. It's not just for husbands and wives or boyfriends or girlfriends. This is for everybody. So, James <clears throat> 1. We are going to start Let's we'll start at just 12. God blesses the people who patiently endure testing. Afterward, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. The crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. Won't that be a wonderful reward to get? All right, let's look at verse 13. And remember, no one who wants to do wrong should ever say, God is tempting me. God is never tempted to do wrong. And he never tempts anyone. Okay? That's something to remember. God never tempts us to do wrong and God himself cannot be tempted to do wrong alright um, Jesus is God himself isn't he the scripture right here will even show us that alright in case anybody was wondering uh, we'll keep reading. Verse 14. Temptation comes from the lure of our own evil desires. I've got a couple different translations here. James 1.14. Each one is tempted by his own evil desires and lust. And then is lured away and enticed. Each person is tempted by his own evil desires or lust. It's another word that you can use there for that. So within how in the world can you and me be tempted by our own evil desires and lust? Because what you say, in order for a man to lust after a woman, wouldn't that woman have to be there in his, in his view for him to lust after her? It's not that woman that's causing that man to lust. It's not that, like we see a lot today, half-naked women walking around 
And I used to be one of them years ago, and I sure did. And that was wrong. Lord, forgive me. I was not modest at all. But anyways, getting off track. It's not that woman causing that man to lust. It's that man's own evil desires within his heart that causes him to be tempted to lust. All right? Because the Bible says that the human heart is wicked. The depth of sin in the human heart. Who could know? But the Lord does. That's in Jeremiah. Look that up. Alright, so we really we see this here. That each one is tempted by his own desires and lust. And then is lured away and enticed. And now when we are lured and tempted to sin and we give in and do it. Right here in James 15 it says, When that desire that's in our own heart is conceived or we give in to that temptation, you know, it says we have then sinned. And when sin is fully grown, it gives birth to death. That results in death. So that's easy to see how each and every one of us have fallen short of the glory of God, doesn't it? Because he's perfect. And the Bible says that he cannot be tempted by evil. And he tempts no one. Um, what else? Let's just look at this real quick. What I was talking about, you know, Jesus is God. Cross-reference here with Matthew 4.1, alright? So it says, sorry, this is kind of broken up. If anybody can follow along, that's good. But it says, um, remember, no one who wants to do wrong should ever say, God is tempting me. Because God is never tempted to do wrong. And he never tempts anyone else either. There are no evil desires within the heart of God to tempt him. He's perfect. Jesus was perfect. There was no evil desires in his heart to tempt him to sin. And so, in Matthew 4, 1, Jesus was led by the whole, his, the Spirit into the wilderness, you remember that? To be tempted by the devil. Why did the devil have to tempt him? Because there was no evil desires in the heart of Jesus Christ. Because he's God. And God cannot be tempted. He has no evil desire in his heart. So Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Whereas we can see in James here, one fourteen, that each one of us is tempted by our own evil desires. You see? So that's for that. But, um, so, <clears throat> so lusting, lust, it's just a desire, right? Lust is a desire. It doesn't have to be lusting after a person, desiring that person to sleep with them, you know? It could be lusting after, say if I'm a woman, right, and there's another woman, there at the basketball game and she is beautiful to look at you know pretty has perfect skin complexion and I don't um, slender and looks good in her clothes they fit her good and she seems to be popular because everybody wants to sit around her at the ball games and talk with her. And she seems happy. She's always smiling. 
you know, she always so chipper. And she's got the nicest jewelry on and the most fashionable pocket bag. And her hair is always colored up and trimmed and done just right. I can lust after that woman. Do you see? I can desire the things that that woman has. I can wish I could be like her. You know? I'm being enticed and lured and lusting after what that woman has in her life, you know, and her money and stuff like that. Um, when we go shopping, you know, we can lust after clothes and things and possessions. We can just go and want things so bad. Oh, that is such a beautiful outfit. I would look so good in that. Lusting after things. To the point to where we're being tempted to give in and buy something that we don't even can't afford to buy. You know what I mean? Always buying things that we really can't even afford to buy. Lusting after material things. Now, am I saying that it's wrong to go buy an outfit at the mall? No. I'm saying, ask the Lord to search your heart and reveal to you. And Lord, please reveal to me things that displace Him. Things that aren't honoring unto Him. Things that are, that can tempt us. And give birth to sin. Cause us to fall into sin. Draw us away from the Lord. Get our mind off of the Lord in heavenly matters. And, and have our mind thinking about this world. And material things and possessions. And cars and houses. And the latest and greatest of everything there is to have in this world. Do you see what I mean? Not being content. With what we have. And therefore being able to be thankful for what we have. And grateful to the Lord for what he's given us. Things like that. So you see. We all lust. We all have desires. And sometimes we don't know if it's an evil desire or not. You know. We have to ask the Lord. To show us. What's the true desires in my heart, Lord? Am I lusting after something in this world? Or am I becoming more and more satisfied with you and you alone? And things to do with you, Lord. And learning and growing in you. That I might love you with all my heart, mind, soul, and strength. And love others as myself. It's just some things to think about. We have to be careful. We need the Lord's help. To shine that searchlight into our heart. And this word right here is where it gets started. You see, the Lord works. His word is like a knife that cuts into the deepest, post, deepest most parts of us. Revealing what's there. And what do we do? Let me just say this. What do we do? <clears throat> when we do realize that there's some evil, unclean desire, or we're lusting after something, what do we do? When the Lord gives light on that, we're able to see it. All we do is ask the Lord to forgive us. Take that to the Lord. Don't hide it. Don't sweep it under a rug. Don't wish it just weren't there. Go to the Lord with it. Ask Him to forgive you. Ask Him to change this about you. Give you a new heart. And this takes time. And we're all in the same boat here. We all are. Me, you, that woman we think that has it all together. Okay? We're all in the same boat.
because we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that's why we need the sinless, spotless, perfect, not able to be tempted because there is no evil desires in him. Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. He's the perfection. He's the standard. All right? So I hope that might can help somebody. And please help me, Lord. We need you for this. We want clean hearts. Clean hearts. A pure heart. Clean hands. Lord, please help us. In Jesus' name I ask. Amen.